All right, we'll look out for it. All right, everybody, it's time for the final round of Swiss here at World Championship 29. Marshall and Paul, take it away. Thank you, Maria. Welcome back to the booth here at World Championship. Marshall Sutcliffe with Paul Cheon. And, uh, well, they set it up for us there at the news desk. We've got one more round to go before we fill out the rest of the top eight slots for the World Championship. Those players will come back tomorrow to battle. But uh, tension in the feature match behind us for sure. Um, across the board, you know, there's a lot of tiebreaker math happening. There's a lot of, you know, what can I do? Uh, do I need to win? I guess we're just going to play that type of stuff happening. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can put yourself in a good position for top eight by continuing to win. And if presented with a choice on whether you need to win or do something else, just choose to win and you'll, you'll put yourself in the yeah. best spot. No, absolutely. But however, with this match, it's just straight up. Very clean. Very clean. Win and you're in. And Willie Adel, very familiar with this ma uh, matchup. Kenji Sego uh, playing a very similar list. Might be the same list as the one that uh, Yuta Takahashi played, which is who he played in the last round of day one. And uh, we saw how long those games could go, and we saw, as Monty mentioned, the power of Terranex Rex uh, in that matchup. What about Willie? He was like on the rocks okay. yesterday, and all, right. all of a sudden we finds himself with a 3-0 yes. in the booster draft this morning, a 2-1, and now he's playing for top eight suddenly. I mean, he was a 3-3 three three yesterday. Yep, Th from 3-3 three and three to 9-4, and four, so 6-1 and one after the uh, middling start. The veteran still got it, does he? Apparently. We haven't seen quite as much of Willie as we had in prior years, but uh, here he is. Always a factor in any tournament that he plays in. And it looks like he started off on six cards here, Paul. Yep. He's playing Domain Ramp. I wonder if Willie's just going to run out Invasion of Zendikar here while the shields are down. No make disappear available. Yeah. So sacrificing the courier's briefcase for mana to make sure that he can get two lands into play here. Although I wonder if that was the plan, if there may, may have been a consideration to play it first and then attack, and then it. attack it with yeah. the 1-1. Because then, next turn, even if the 1-1 dies, you can play the Archangel, or the, uh, the, yes, the Archangel, and deal the final two points of damage to the battle to flip it over. That is the normal sequence. There are, of course, sometimes reasons to deviate. Right. But uh, even if it wasn't on purpose, the, the big picture is looking good here for Willie with Invasion of Zendikar having resolved. And you can see the, the land count <laughs> right. as a result. The really nice thing about the four copies of Version of Loyalty that the Japanese team uh, is playing is the fact that you get to kind of play a little bit of that draw-go game, right? You can pass with make disappear up, but then if they don't do anything, you can still make a 2-2 creature and provide some pressure. All right, Virtue's going to take down Denik, and now we're going to attack <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the battle. Oh, that was big. Kenji missed the land drop, but found land number three here. But not really putting on much pressure here. Nothing so far. Just going to pass turn back. Willie with six lands already. Right. So you could play the Archangel of Wrath. And you can play around make disappear here. With mana up, attacking is a little bit dicey because Kenji can just make a 2-2 two -two to block. Mm -hmm. But that does leave the shields down for you to play an Archangel of Wrath and double kick it to kill the 2-2 two -two token and also the Invasion of Zendikar. So it could be a sacrifice worth making. Oh, look at this. He's going to go for a second copy yeah. of well, Invasion. So now that you've done this, it's a little bit worse to just go for the attack now right. because Kenji just can, can flash in the Virtue of Loyalty token here. But this just in just this is just this just ensures Willie that you know for any future turns moving forward, make this appear is not going to be too much of an issue here. If make disappear had been used to counter, well then Willie would have the clear attack there. Does he attack at this point? Is kind of an interesting. Yeah, I question. don't know. 
I don't know. I mean, they're playing four copies of Virtue of Loyalty. Maybe not. Yeah, three mana, seven spells in hand. Right. I mean, Kenji missed his land drop last turn, so Willie knows. Good. Spells. Look at that. Does not Clean attack. Clean living. The Wily nice. veteran. Very, very nice. Might just cut down this token, too. No? I don't know how many other targets there are for cut down, but of course you can also discard it with Rafine. Okay, get in for two. And once again, go. So no land drop, which again means seven spells in hand here. And Willie has a massive mana advantage here, but of course has to be mindful of make this appear. You see, he's got two lands kind of strategically yeah. set aside right there. so he can do this and if kenji does go for to make this appear he would have to sacrifice his token here mm -hmm. but this does oh again then he has uh, he also has the cut uh, cut down for the for the token if he wants you know, this is where not hitting that battle way back on the earlier turn there might come back to bite him although right. it looks like it won't here because yeah. of the cut down as you mentioned okay back over to you kenji so board remains clear man advantage in Willie's side, but cards, spells advantage very much for Kenji. Right, no creature in play now, so can't make this appear too much. If Willie finds an untapped land, he can just slam Atraxa. There, there it, it is. is, and you could tell that that's exactly what he was looking for. Yeah, if he gets to resolve Atraxa here, this is the reload and producing right. a huge threat. There's Atraxa Grand Unifier. Oh, this is one of the best creatures go. printed in recent memory. It's had right. an effect on numerous formats. It's it's certainly a build around, right? And you can see all the different types you can get. You get one of artifact, battle creature, enchantment, instant land, planeswalker. How many? We're getting. So so far he's got battle, <laughs> Three, artifact, four, creature, five? planeswalker, land, sorcery. Enchantment? An enchantment. Needs a sorcery too, right? You can and a sorcery. Seven cards. So he only missed instant? Seven mana, draw seven? Whoa. <laughs> Look at Willie. <laughs> like, yeah, all right, this no one's not looking too bad. deal. Yeah. Meanwhile, Kenji went from facing an empty board to facing a 7-7 seven, seven flying vigilance death touch lifelink. <laughs> It's like, well, I got my it's value. Dead. You can kill it, but I mean, there's no pressure here. There's just, Kenji can't come back from this. Was it a seven for one? <laughs> yes, I guess so, yeah. It was, right? Well, this briefcase is going to draw three cards, too, at some point, right? True. So it's like a 10 for one. Wow. You saw the patience from Willie Adel, making sure that he could play around, make disappear. He has a ton of experience playing this ramp deck. Ossification. I'll send Rafine packing. All right. Now, what large threat do you want to play this turn, if any? Willie's in the uh, in the business here of overwhelming Kenji with card advantage and threats. Right. He can certainly take his time doing it. It looks like an Archangel for one, because with the briefcase you can pay for make this. That's right. He can technically pay, though. I. Oh. Yeah. It is interesting to me just because. Yeah. Uh, the briefcase could become three cards later. Right. I wouldn't hate to trade a of course. disappear for a briefcase at this point, especially given that Willie has really shown that he is not going to play into make disappear. Like, right. he's very aware of the card. He is not going to fall for it. Yeah, but this allows you to kind of close out the game quicker, and he's so far ahead on cards. If Kenji's, if Kenji chooses to go for the make disappear here, I think he's okay with paying and losing out on the briefcase. Well, he didn't, so... Instead, it's going to be go for the throat to kill the uh, the transformed invasion of Zendikar. Okay. 
Kenji's been able to keep the board somewhat clear, but it just feels like he's taking one step while Willie's taking two. Yeah. And There's a Rafine. Can just run out the Nissa here at this point, or just a herd migration. Oh, and an Archangel of Wrath off the top as well. I mean, with the mana, you can actually just tap six mana, target it twice, and still pay wow. for the uh, for the ward cost. And still have two mana left over yeah. for, the, <laughs> for a potential Meg disappear here as well. Pay for the ward twice. And it enters the battlefield, so he has to let that happen. Really brutal. Yeah, this is just <laughs> far too much here. Yeah, he's just overwhelming Kenji Sago. And he attacked yep. the battle with the Archangel, so he's going to get the 4 4 out of the deal as well. So just 11 power on the battlefield, knows about the Nissa. It's a briefcase for to, to refill if needed, but I, I think Kenji can't even beat the board that's in play right now. Would you board out make disappear? I think it's really, really important. It really depends on how much disruption Kenji has in the board. This was just kind of an awkward game for him. The ideal strategy here is to have a somewhat aggressive start and back it up with make disappear. So force Willie to But react. Kenji's hand was tap land, tap land, and, that, oh, and Willie was on the play. So that gave him the opportunity with the briefcase to go turn three invasion, which then, of course, allowed him, allow him to comfortably play around that make disappear. Which he did for the duration of the game. Willie's lining up another Haymaker. What does he have now? I think this is maybe a... Oh, Nissa. How many forests are we looking at Full here? Full price Nissa. This is a There's five forests. Five. Yeah. So we can overrun here for five. Give your entire team plus five, plus five, and trample. Yep. And he's just going <laughs> to do that count. right now. And Kenji Sago couldn't say, well, that's a lot of numbers. He's like, wait a second. <laughs> This doesn't happen oh. that often. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he read it and he laughed. He's, this can't be good news. Can I go to combat? Sure. Will the Wanderer make him survive? I don't Significantly know. Significantly lethal. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to concede. That's game number one going to Willie Adel. He's now one game away from a top eight. One game away from the top. When's the last time Willie put in a top Boy, finish. Good question. That's a really good question. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's been a while. He's been playing since 1997. He's got four top finishes. And he's in the Hall of Fame as well. But he was voted into the Hall of Fame quite a long time ago now. Extremely accomplished player. Multiple top eights. His last top finish was over 10 years ago. Really? Pro Tour returned to Ravnica, which was in 2012. Wow. He also won a GP that year in Toronto. That was kind of his, one of those seasons where it all comes together. Right. And he's always around, you know, with, with good oh, yeah. finishes and stuff. Yeah. It's not like he fell off, but top finishes are hard, it turns out. Another missed land drop here for Kenji. Oh, does no. have a creature in play, and Willie's hand doesn't have a whole lot of action right now, but of course you can cycle the Rafine's tower. But ideally, Kenji was would would be playing something here. Now he does have a play though. He does have the option of going either make this appear or virtue of loyalty. Mm -hmm. Put that pressure on. So, and Willie only has one relevant threat in hand right now in that Wandering Emperor. Yeah, Willie's had a huge impact on the game as a player and also as a mentor. I remember when he got voted into the Hall of Fame, you know, he had the four top finishes, which was like right on the borderline. You know, like you, you needed a little bit of extra convincing to vote for somebody at that time. There's a Chromos Seed Shark that's going to get countered. And, um, oh, and he finds the land. There you go. And he, he did end up getting voted in. And I, I think the thing that pushed it over the edge for a lot of people was the fact that in Brazil and South America in general, he was, uh, you know, a mentor to a lot of the yeah. players down there. He kind of showed him the ropes. Yeah. All right, so wedding announcement now from Kenji. Yeah, big land drop. This is it's a big swing. This is about enough pressure now where Kenji can kind of comfortably just play, just pass, because Protect now, it. yeah, and and just just look. This is enough. This is what I got, and I'm going to keep up my counter magic. Willie's passed the turn back. There's another, another land. 
Blue yeah. Water. So, what is it? Maybe a C Chrome oh. Coast? I don't think so. It came to play untapped, so it's the. Um, oh, you're right. That's line number four. What is it then? Deserted Breach. Deserted Beach? Beach. <laughs> beach. That makes a lot more sense. Deserted Breach sounds like a sorcery. <laughs> yeah, it's probably red. Yeah. <laughs> Something can't block. Maybe a <laughs> land gets destroyed. <laughs> All right, in comes the team. Just the two creatures, but as you mentioned, it's, it's good pressure. And at here. this point, Willie's at the point where you can't play around counters anymore. Right. Whatever you draw, you're just going to play. Yeah, really awkward for Willie there, because he actually would have preferred to have the Wandering Emperor on his turn while his opponent was tapped out, but there was nothing tapped. Oh, but there's a nice one-two punch. Wandering Emperor gets countered, but Sunfall. Yeah. And Willie, recognizing that he's behind at this point and yeah. just needs to run it out. It's it's not the end of the world here for Kenji because he can just go uh, make a 2-2 here with the Virtue of Loyalty in hand. So still can continue to provide some pressure and that wedding announcement will flip next turn. See the incubator token there for Willie, though it isn't awake just yet. A couple of good options here for Kenji can go either Lord Skitter or play the second wedding announcement here. All right, so first given that, first, get that in for two. definitely not a Lord Skitter here. Oh, of course, virtue of loyalty. So you can you can stack this where you go token and then put two plus one plus one counters. That's going to be really tough. This is the Very turn tough. after Willie played Sunfall. Right. Like he wrath the board, and by the time it's here, he's facing down. Six power already. Or sorry, five. Might need to That's cycle rough. here. Try to find a ley line binding, perhaps. Or virtue of persistence. Well, he's down to 14. He's up a game. And so just trying to figure out what he could possibly draw after cycling one of these three triomes that he has in hand. It's like, I gotta leave up a white in case I find binding. I need a black source in case I find a virtue of persistence. So this makes sense here, right? Now he has access to a white and black mana here. Funny, it's actually seven power. <laughs> I said six, five, and seven. But yeah, he doesn't really need too many threats, Kenji, at this point. Just to, any two creatures on the board will either right. be big enough or grow big enough to, to kill Willie eventually. Yeah, and if Kenji it makes can, it really tough if you're trying to kill things one by one or even sweepers. Yeah, no, so if Kenji can just find one counter spell here, I just don't see Willie uh, coming back. I mean, this, this also could just be enough, right? We're looking at an attack for uh, five. Willie can turn that token into a 2-2. Chump block. Chump block. <laughs> Kenji did draw a Lauren of the Third Path. You could use that, perhaps, to kill the 2-2 and attack. OK. You put a creature onto the battlefield, and you can kill it. And this is going to get out of hand. This is Lord Skipper. Oh, yeah. The Sewer King. All right, and so this thing pumps out a 1-1 one, one rat every combat. Right. And then, of course, nonsense ensues That's with the thing. virtue of loyalty. Yeah, oh, four and three, correct. So can't even make a decent block here. Nope. So Willie's on Sunfall, please. Sunfall and then hope that Kenji doesn't have any threats ever again. Uh, Atraxa, I suppose, would also yes, work. Because Kenji bigger. doesn't have removal. Okay, he's going to cycle Chetmere Garden. Did not see, but it better be. He's got a couple of lands in hand. Buy him a little bit of time. Oh, it was oh. ossification. Oh, that is a sunfall. Oh, and a sunfall. Okay. Okay. That that is a start here. Now you get a four four. <laughs> oh, Willie really says it resolves? Really? Okay, <laughs> game on. Dead. Did you see him sit yeah. up in his chair? And it doesn't he obviously doesn't have an untapped land right. here. <laughs> he would have played it first. Definitely want to play, play one of these lands though. You want seven lands, that's kind of the number that you want to hit uh -huh. to play your big cards. But now Willie's thinking, well you definitely don't have counters. Right. So, so a whatever I off draw, the top, yeah. please. Herd migration? Yeah, herd migration. Okay, there's Lauren of the Third Path. 
Was Kenji able to find land number six to also go wedding announcement? Nope. No, but close enough. Yeah. Again, you know, we mentioned it, just really two any things, and they're going to grow out of hand so right. quickly. I mean, they're going to be lethal. This is a 4-4 and a 4-3. Now, right. now, Willie has an answer with, to one of them with that ossification. Can he find an Atroxa? He found Archangel oh. of Wrath. It's a 4-4 four, four and a 4-3. Four, four, three. Four, three. So he can kill one. Right. And then the other one won't be lethal yep. on its own. And he'll gain four here. Right. Go up to 11. Red from the Proving Ground, black from the Tower, white from the Plains, and then right. two colorless. So it all works. And he'll kill Lauren. Now, will he play this eighth land or use it to cycle? He's going to pass. He's at that magic number seven, and he's going to keep his options open. He still hasn't been able to wake up that incubator token yet. This is interesting, though, because Willie killed the 4-3, but now Kenji can safely attack with the 4-4 four, four yeah, here. He can't trade it he off. He can't block. I mean, he can just start attacking with the Archangel and swinging yeah. that back. So maybe that's his thinking. Kenji does have a Wandering Emperor, though, in hand. Also, if he draws, like, Invasion of Zendikar, he could snap flip it. Right. But instead, he's just going to attack with Archangel. Oh, there's Watering Ember. Bye-bye. Willie says, yelp. In Wait, response. Is he going to cycle in response? Perhaps Willie boarded in some counter magic? Right? He's giving us a hint of that if he's going to yeah. cycle as far as there's like a Disdainful Stroke or Negate or something, maybe? Nope. And yep. All right. So he minus. Kill the Archangel. Okay. So could technically remove the Wandering Emperor and the token if he wanted. Can he use Leyline Binding to stem the bleeding on Virtue or something? Like, what are the most important cards? With another Virtue Exiled, I don't think that's the most dangerous card. Okay. I think it's just deal with the permanence in play. So I think, okay. you know, the 4-4 four, four token that's in play. Yeah. Excuse me. 5-5 five, five token that's in play. They grow every time we look away. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so I imagine that's going to be at least one of the targets. And then it's a good question on whether or not you want to perhaps deal with the Wandering Emperor or remove one of the enchantments that's in play. There's ossification. Take out the token. It's gone forever. Could also just play the briefcase. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no All threat right. right now. There is no threat. I mean, if Kenji can make a token here with the Wandering Emperor, but, but then it, it dies. It dies, yeah. So he might. So Willie might be thinking, well, I, I got a little time here, and if you make the token, I can kill it, and then the Emperor's gone anyway. And Kenji really does need a threat. Okay, that is a threat. What did he get? So there's a couple of wedding announcements. Certainly going to oh play one. Boy. I don't know. How is Willie going to beat wedding announcement into wedding announcement? I mean, it's just yeah. unending. The, if that Rafine's Tower was an untapped land, it would be big, big trouble. But even just the wedding announcement, you go wedding announcement, perhaps just make a token with the Wandering Emperor. That's two giant creatures. Uh, you do have a couple of chump blockers in play. You do have a Leyline Binding. Mm -hmm. And I believe Willie has the ability to draw three cards off the Courier's Briefcase. Blue, white, green, black, and a red. Yes. Yeah, he does. So Willie fighting here. He is really scrapping it out in this game. This one looked like it was going to avalanche on him. It hasn't quite. It has threatened to multiple times, though. Right. So Kenji chooses to make a token here, wants to end the game quickly here, knows that there's that Courier's briefcase in play. The longer this game goes, it's going to get worse for him. I think Willie's happy to see this. It's it means that if he finds something to turn around the board state itself, he won't have to deal with the Planeswalker. Big draw step here for Willie. This is huge for Willie. Let's see what he can find. Maybe an Atraxa. Atraxa? Nope, nope, nope. Montagna. It's the mountain. I think we're going to see a draw five. Oh, excuse me, draw three here. Line it up. Might as well play the mountain. All right. And tap one of the lands for black. Yeah. OK, so draw okay. three. And then he has the Leyline Binding plus the Chump Blockers to potentially keep right. himself alive. You can go two blockers plus Leyline Binding here. That looked like a lot of lands. Uh, I think I saw an Angel. OK. No, maybe not. 
Topiary no, no. Stomper. Topiary Stomper. Okay, so not Topiary Chump Blocker. <laughs> so not ideal here. You really want to get that wedding announcement off the battlefield here, but I'm not sure if Willie's in a position to be able to get rid of that. Says the unflipped. Right, the unflipped, because that's going to be generating an extra token every turn. And yeah. while well, Kenji's going to have a another big follow up here with Denik and wedding announcement potentially. Wow, that's a sick turn. Yeah, Willie just looks like he has been overwhelmed at this point. He's got Leyline Binding here. Is he just killing the token here? He says, does it resolve? All right. And now he says, well, I actually got Wait a choice a here. Do I want this it. wedding announcement? Yeah, this is a really difficult situation because he has to think about the short-term implications of him just being dead to what's there. But also he has to look and say, well, am I ever going to be able to beat, for example, that wedding announcement that you were talking right. about, the un unflipped? Murra Kenji just has more follow-ups here, mm -hmm. right? It's not just what's in play. Yeah, I think you're going to see... I think you're going to see Willie yeah. um, maybe roll his eyes a little when he sees what the two follow-up plays are here from Kenji. Is that a 3-3? Three, three? Is he double blocking maybe? Okay. For a trade? Yeah, that's a trade. With the with the virtue in play, you just kind of want to... But here's, here's just two more things. Now, remember, these wedding announcements actually will not make tokens. Right? Because he attacked with both. He attacked with two creatures. Right. So so that's actually good, I think. It's actually better for Willie. I mean, it's not great, <laughs> but right. at least he's not facing lethal here. And he still has top decks. Maybe he could find something. You have to think that Atraxa has to be on the Ooh! top. Oh, did he just find an Atraxa that Grand Unifier? An Atraxa. That's a lot of cards. Last time we saw him draw seven cards off of it. <laughs> okay. All right. Kenji Sago has to be like, are you kidding me right now? Oh, my Where does this guy goodness. keep finding these cards? Okay. What can we find here with the Atraxa? Boom. Atraxa Grand Unifier. Let's see what he hits. This is huge. Ooh. Extra drama here. Definitely. Oh, There's a Sunfall, okay. there's an Archangel, okay. and a lot of lands. Okay, not not the best. No, so he's going to go course. land, sorcery, artifact. And creature. And creature. Probably Boseju. You could get the Boseju. Oh, yeah, that would take out one of the... One of the four enchantments, enchantments in play. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Funny enough, that's kind of like not the best. Right. You know, like hey, he, got, he got a 7-7 seven, seven lifelinker plus four cards, and you're like, eh, was hoping for more. Well, after game one, of course. But hey, look. I just, I in mean, general, he's still behind. <clears throat> he's at seven. Does mm -hmm. he have an immediate answer here to the Denix? So Kenji does have the Urtai yeah. resurrected, which could just kill the Atraxa, get right? Get out of here. That'll, that'll draw Willie a card. However, you'll get that out off the battlefield. So I imagine that's going to happen. I wonder if Willie wanted to consider just playing an untapped land and briefcase just to have an extra chump blocker, right? Yeah. Because I mean, you're gonna you're gonna kill this. Ooh, but this makes things a little a little more interesting here. What's Kenji that? draws the Wandering Emperor. Oh. Okay. You'll have to choose between Wandering Emperor and Airtie Resurrected. But Atraxa does have Vigilance, so mm -hmm. I, I imagine it's just going to be Urtai. Oh, did he pass? Weird. He got the, the discount, Yeah. and he's just double-checking, but Besage, you only cost you one here because Atrox is on the battlefield. Yeah, you don't see that mode used as often, no. the discount on Besage. Mm -hmm. Any card that has a basic life type. Yeah, so you can get a, a Rafine's Tower if you wanted to. And you see what's happening there is Kenji's just asking I, for yeah. an Oracle text. I wonder if you just want to play the Urtai here to kill it and then put a counter on it, right? I think so. But choosing not to. Hmm. Remember, Atraxa has Vigilance, so Wandering Emperor right. doesn't kill it. So. No. And you definitely don't want to let Willy hit you with it and maybe buy himself a whole extra turn worth right. of life. Yeah. Perhaps Kenji thinking yes. that he has so much power and toughness might be more concerned about a follow-up spell. Okay. 
I mean, if you can get to the point of making a yeah. Trox a chump block, you're in pretty good shape. Right. Look at but this. But a just hit. That's yeah. 14. Very patient, patient here. But I mean, Willie's going to have a pretty fantastic turn here. However, you uh, you slice this up. Could counter the Archangel of Wrath. Okay. It's a chump blocker. Kenji does know about three of the cards at least. So Denik is currently a 6-7, right? There's yeah. two, two wedding announcements that are flipped, two counters. With the Wandering Emperor, if Willie chooses to block, you can just go Wandering Emperor, make it into a seven-powered first strike creature. Yeah. Okay, but here's Archangel of Wrath. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, it's already resolved. Right? I'm not... Has it? He just ca he just cast it. I don't know if... Uh, and it was moving to targets. I don't know if Kenji... Okay. Kenji could counter this. I feel like there, w there, may there was enough time to respond. Well... Yeah, it's just, it's an ETB trigger, right? Yeah, 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 but, okay. Okay, perhaps it's already in play then, okay. And using this to pump the creature. Just save it from the damage. Yeah, because it's now a 5-5, five five, so it doesn't right. die. Makes sense. Yes. Kenji doing everything he can to keep his board state in place. <laughs> yeah. And he's doing a good job of it. He is. This has been an incredible game. I thought this was going to be over nine turns ago. <laughs> right. Does he have the mana to play the other virtue? He does. He has the mana to play another virtue and keep up Urtai. If, if he runs out the Plaza of Heroes. And this is a 7-8 first striker with lifelink. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm putting this in the way. Yeah, well, he's not. He's These not creatures are just around. enormous. Huge. And that was, what, a 1-1? One, one? <laughs> they just jumped. <laughs> All right, here comes the other virtue. Oh, I mean, this is just obscene. Yeah. Although now you, you are put to the test here, right? Because that Atraxa can just kill the Wandering Emperor now, right? Mm -hmm. So that goes to five. <laughs> We're going to run out of dice here pretty quick. Yeah, that's that's rough. Because he is aware of the Sunfall, I believe. He but, is. And I think he wants to counter the Sunfall. I see. Ooh, that's a great draw. What did he Will find? He go for the throat. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Willie seems to find just what he needs at the last moment. Right. Over and over and over. He's here. Interesting. These are both life-linking flyers. I would consider just sending both at the Emperor. I'm not sure that the life total matters, and if Kenji has a way to kill it. Wow, it worked. But I suppose if Kenji uses the removal spell, then that opens the window for Willy to maybe cast the Sweeper. Oh, okay. So, gain 10. <laughs> He's kind of happy either way. Right. 10? Wow. <laughs> but with double virtue, I mean, that's not going to take too, no too much, right? Okay. There's the topiary that's, stomper. That's totally fine as well. Oh, Kenji just being so, so patient here with this Urtai. What is he waiting for? What does he want to get with it, I wonder? Maybe the Nissa? Because, I mean, Willy has, like, really put his game plan forward in all these turns that Kenji's been sitting on. Right. Like, a lot of really bad things happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, Kenji's also going to be able to gain a bunch of life, and it's really hard. You can't kill the Denik that's in play because there's double Plaza of Heroes. Mm. So you can make it indestructible, right? I see. So it's like, hey, I'm going to attack. I, you want to hit me for 10 and gain 10? I can hit you for 10 and gain 10. And that's 10 this turn. <laughs> <laughs> right. The longer this goes, the worse it gets for you. So this is a 7-7 seven, seven and a 9-10 getting in? Yeah. It is 7-7. 1-1 <laughs> <laughs> one, one token trading with Atraxa? Right.
Now remember, Nissa does kill enchantments, so uh -huh. slowly. So can slowly try to eat away yeah. at. How about draw three lane. again? Okay, maybe looking for wow. a leyline binding. Finds one. Oh, he found a leyline binding. I gotta say, by the way, these briefcases have been clutch. They've been incredible. He's drawn six. He's extra playing cards? the full four copies too, which uh -huh. is pretty notable. He likes it. Some lists play zero, some lists play two, but four isn't that common. Okay, he's gonna go for go for the throat. That does leave Denik on the battlefield. And he can just take it. Yeah, right? that weighs a 28 now. Yeah. yeah. And remember, go for the throat not being targeted at the Denik because of the Plaza of Heroes that's right. in play. But Kenji have another fantastic draw here, wedding announcement, which is just <laughs> more of the same. Draw a card and put a 5-5 five, five into play? No kidding. Just a 5-5 five, five into play every yeah. turn? So that's seven counters on deck. Isn't the ramp deck the one that's supposed to go feet. big? No kidding. Uh, I have 32. Yes, I do, yeah. 23 plus 9. Oh, excuse me. Do a token doesn't come into play, right? Three. Because two three. creatures yeah. attack. 18. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 19. Well, a card will come into hand, plus though, three. so that's not bad. Yeah. What is Willie's plan, though, for Denik? <laughs> like, he doesn't really have a way to get it off the battlefield with those plazas, right? Multiple removal spells. Like, he has to fire off. Like, end of turn leyline binding, untap leyline binding, wow, wow, or go wow. for the throat or something. That's annoying. Sunfall would do it. Okay, Sunfall, right. sure. But his board's decent. Yeah, but like, casting Sunfall on this board also just feels really not, weird. Not where you want to be. Right. Now what? Did he finally find uh This is Nissa, okay. Oh, it's just a big Nissa. I think okay. this is just going to... Okay. There's Airtight. So that it's is what now. he was waiting for. Right. So now the coast is clear to use a removal spell on the Denik. So if oh, you have a yeah. Leyline Binding, you might want to use it does. on this Denik here. He totally does. He's got a Mirix as well. And this is going to be Leyline Binding. Yep. Oh, that was really nice by Willy Adel. He set that up. Very patient. Wait, 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 wait. Once the door opened, he slammed it back shut again. Get in with the flyers. Get in with everybody, right? Oh, no, I guess that. Well, he's okay with this trade. Oh, okay. Stomper for it five is four. only for toughness. Right. <laughs> the minimum. Wow. Wow, okay. Take 10. That's an interesting block, too. I mean, that thing would have been bigger than the Topiary Stomper next turn. <laughs> These life totals. <laughs> These life totals are absurd. Well, both players are above 20 now. This is game number two. If you're just tuning in, game number one was a much more straightforward affair. Oh, back up Denik. Okay. So Willie says, after all that. Right. It's like, oh, I got to fight through this one too. And this one's going to get huge, as they do. Usually when you cast a Traxa, the game kind of ends if you get to untap. Yeah, but this one he's this already is a fight. two. And the game is very much not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to a 6-7 uh, Denik. Soon to be a 9-10 Denik once the wedding announcement flips. Auspication. Can use it on the token, not yeah. the Denik. Ooh, also a wandering emperor here from Willy. This is just insane. Wow, oh, and Kenji has a Takenuma in hand. That allow that can get you the Urtai back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he gonna get Wandering Emperor here? Could. It is a little cheaper. The funny part for me is I'm starting to think library size. Right. Right? Like, how are we looking okay. at libraries? Yeah, he is going to get Water and Emperor. And he's going to cast it in an attempt to take out the Archangel of Wrath. Okay. So now Ossification does kill the Denik. Or maybe you want to use it on the Wandering Emperor? It's a really nice answer for Denik because it exiles it. He won't be seeing it back. Right. But most of Willie's removal is our exile effects. Okay. Let's see what he does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to take out okay. Denik. 
And then I suppose he can use a Troxa to kill the Wandering Emperor at some point. Yep, on the following turn, yes. This Atrox has been on the battlefield for a very long time. Ooh, does that do anything? Ooh, destroy, destroy for evil. Kenji. You could just kill the Atraxa. Right, that's a it's just an answer. Play. Or is there something, do you want to kill one of the enchantments that have been ossified? Right, get your threat back. Okay, here's Wandering Emperor right back at you. Well, that's being exiled. Wow, what a Token game. was somehow bigger than Atroxa, so he had to exile it. Now, now Kenji will get a token here. A 1-1. One, one. <laughs> you mean or a 6-3. A 6-6? Six, uh, six, six? Two extra counters coming. <laughs> And Just a 6-6. Six, six. Now a flip, so 4-4, four, four, two counters on it. Right, 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 right. Yep. So he made a 1-1, one, one and it's a 6-6. Six, six. Cool. So the cards that are exiled here are two Denix, right? Those are the things that you could kill. You can kill an Ossification that's on a Denix or a Leyline Binding that's on a Denix, or just simply use the Destroy Evil to kill the Atraxa. I think, Feels like I think this that's is a good go time for. to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You take off a huge threat and you get to keep your Wandering Emperor. And he is going to do just that. Okay, so finally that Atroxa dies. Oh, took but forever. Tranquil Thrill back. What? That was the draw for Willy. It is incredible on this board, by the way. When it enters battlefield, you may pay green up to three times. No when way. you do, you can choose these modes up to that many times. So Are you can you kill serious? three enchantments. Admittedly, I have not played with this one. I feel like you just made that up, but I believe <laughs> you. <laughs> wow. So this is just lining up the mana here. But this is going to be huge. Is he just looking to Sunfall here? I see five mana being tapped. I guess it's a pretty safe spot to do so. Right, you get a 2-2 two -two blocker here, and then you run out the frill back here? Yeah. What a sideboard card. They capped it at three times. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you don't want to go two nuts, right? <laughs> Just three. Kenji says, OK. He's looking through the graveyard to see if that's one that he might want to choose. Uh, well, there's no Denix in there. But there is, well, no, and there's not that much recursion, I don't think, so. Yeah, it looks like we're going to speed things up just a little bit for you here as well. This has been an extraordinarily long game. So it looks like the templating must be. Oh, you can't kill multiple things. OK, excuse must be, me. Must yeah, be. yeah, yeah. Because he only killed one enchantment. Right, he did right. take out the graveyard and okay. gained the life. And this game is going for quite a this while here. This is an here. absurd game. Oh. Oh, and there's another destroy evil to bring back Denik. Oh, ambush. Make a blocker and make sure that the Wandering, Wandering Emperor, Emperor stays alive. Oh, that was. That was pretty that was devastating. A nice top deck there from Kenji. Can he finish this game off at some oh, point? Oh, that's another frill back here for, for Willie. Is this thing right. going to bring us to our frilling con conclusion? Or what's the, <laughs> oh, no. Like, oh, no. this has to end, right? Does it, though? It's only game two. Oh, oh there's okay. Rafine. Rafine. But no good attack? Put a counter? OK, now. Now good attack. <laughs> yeah. Remember, now the Plaza of Hero is still in play. Right. Oh. Double pump. So entire team getting plus three, plus three. No more Virtue of Loyalties in play. Those are gone. Those are gone. But that is still a, a Denic that's not going to get blocked here. Got the token. And the Wandering Emperor. And gaining a ton of life. 
Look at right. these life totals. Can Willie just find a nice seven drop here? Kenji's like, go. <laughs> yeah, another seven drop would be good. He's found it every time he needed it. <laughs> okay, okay, well, let's try again. Uh, I think we're headquarters. trying again. And try it okay. again on another headquarters. Uh, okay, it's another what is blocker. It, a stomper? It's a stomper. No more basics left in Willie's deck, unsurprisingly. Okay. Right. But he is going to attack here. And now Kill the finally Kenji Sego. Yeah, Wandering Emperor down. Finally, Kenji's able to start battling. Oh, discards two and keeps a Virtue of Loyalty here. So <laughs> has to fight through another one. Can just make a 2-2 and then play it again. And Willie's like, ah. Everything wow. untaps two and gets counters? This is an insane. Now what do we need? Game. A sunfall? Another sunfall? Oh, oh Atraxa. It's another Atraxa. He doesn't have that <laughs> oh many cards, gosh. though. And remember, these are the ones that have probably gone through by Atraxa, right? But oh, no, he did shuffle. Sorry. How the many sunfalls stopper. have been cast? Probably a favorite to find one. OK, if here we go. Left. Briefcase Sunfall. There's a binding. depopulate in there as well. Uh huh. Archangel. Okay. This game is just oh insane. Oh my goodness. And he's gonna Sunfall. And clear the whole board off okay. again. Okay. How many was that? Five or six? Well, now Kenji doesn't seven. have any creatures, right? No, and it's seven. It's he's a got seven, a seven, seven. seven. Oh, oh, two creatures! <laughs> How about creatures back in business again? It's Lord Skitter <laughs> Sewer King, which wow. is two creatures. And they have hex uh, the, the Lord Skitter will have hexproof here. Yeah, that's right. Lord Skitter's a legend. But remember, Willie just refilled his hand. He did. Boy, that's an instant board rebuild, though, for Kenji. So he needs to deal. He's going to have to. Okay, he's going to. Can't no, even kill the rat. To kill Can't it. even kill the rat. No. Just adding to the board here. So he went upstairs with it? I, I, it looks like it. There's a 7-7 seven, seven in play that can block the rat token. Okay, just. But, but it's not a 7-7, seven, seven, right? It's a. Excuse me. Yeah, and, and he's tapped out, so he can't, right. he can't animate it here. Wow. So what he'll a just draw. be That's jumping hitter. again? I wonder. Library counts. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking in those terms right. at this point. I mean, Willie's at 44. Right. Also, you have to be he's thinking about. He's jumping a lot. You have though. to be thinking about time here, too, right? I, I wonder if Willie is. Yeah. He's jump blocking a heck of a lot for right. a player at 44 life. Okay. Is that turn four? Oh, is this time? That that die You're just, right. just appeared. You're absolutely that right. That what's going on Willie's here. Willie's going to 1-0 win he his is. way into the top eight. And it makes sense why he's chump blocking this whole time, because Kenji just cannot get over the finish line in time. And this looks like it's the fifth turn. Jeez. Dude, this is insane. And Kenji just lets his Lord right. Skitter go, even. He knows. Even. Because it doesn't matter anyway. Right. He cannot deal 47 damage here on the final turn. No, that Atraxa was on the battlefield for so long, as well as the Archangel, and it gained so much extra life. I guess they're just going through the motions at this yeah. point. Look what I've got. Yep. Oh, uh, do they get a couple of extra turns here? I don't know. Maybe? I mean, why are they still... No, that's it. <laughs> wow, Willie <laughs> Adel, one game to zero. Not a call we get to make very often. Is going to secure his seat. That is incredible. Ten years. That game was absurd. And Willie just gave a thumbs up to his support crew over there. And take a look at this. <laughs> oh, that is incredible. incredible. What a game. Oh, look who's here. There's Carlos Ramel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the whole squad's here to root him on. Here. Oh, that is unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> that game, like, I, I was like, this is just going to go forever, and then it actually did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was so much back and forth. You saw how much of a fight uh, Kenji was able to put up despite the Atraxa. Still still was kind of in there for a bit, but, I mean, it was just a little too much. And Willie Adel, you said 2013, right? Mm -hmm. 2012. 2012, so 11 years since his last top finish. Has a shot here with the other Brazilian world champion watching him to potentially get number two. Unbelievable. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, though, we've got lots more magic. More magic? Yeah, don't go anywhere.
and welcome back to coverage here of the Magic Gathering World Championship. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. I'm with Paul Cheon. Whoa, that Whoa. thing's cool. Hello. It looks sweet when you walk by it, oh, too. Yeah. And uh, we're in Las Vegas, Nevada, as you can see. And uh, boy, we just had a real sweat. Take a look at the stage with uh, all the cosplay stuff going on, as well as Manfest here at MagicCon. But take a look at all the players watching the World Championship, which is, of course, what you're going to be doing here in just a minute. We've got a lot of seats to fill still in our top eight, and uh, we're going to get right down to business with filling those seats up. Our first stop is going to be Jean-Emmanuel Dupra versus Matt Foreman. We're going to come in on game number two. Now, Jean-Emmanuel kind of came out of nowhere How here. How did he sneak He's in here? He's just been hanging around, and he is now playing a winning in. You He's know up a game. And he's in with the win. His opponent, Matt Foreman, on the other hand, we're going to call it win in hope. Right. Win in prey might be one to put it, one way to put it. It's the kind of thing where uh, you win and then you just have to let the tiebreakers play themselves out and hope that you're one of the ones that makes it in. I will say, kind of coming into this, I was thinking to myself, you know, it's about time that JED puts up another top finish. He's usually good for one, uh, roughly once a year. He is. Right? So. Top tier player, absolutely excellent. Phenomenal. And we'll see if he can do that just now. Again, he controls his own fate. If he's able to win this game or the next, he will be in the top eight. If he somehow loses this one and the next, then Matt Foreman will knock him out of the top eight, but Matt may not be in either. Right. And winning game one big. Dream crushing. Matt Foreman, Is that perhaps. what we call it, dream Well, crush? if you feel like you have a 5% shot, you, you know, yeah, you, got, well, you got to play it out. So. Definitely. Right. I, I, he probably has better than that, even. Is that Thalia guarding the Thraven? Yeah. Into the 2-4. Taps for white mana, so this is representing Iganjo here. So Matt Foreman thinking, to, am I blocking here or am I just taking two? Just taking two makes a lot of sense. Right, Iganjo gets reduced cost thanks to a legendary Thalia there. And is this right into Rafine? Yeah, well, now he's really <laughs> representing the, uh, <laughs> the damage spell okay, wait, there. Wait, why did you play that before? Yeah, huh. yeah. So good curve for Jean Emmanuel. Oh, but there's an ossification oh. to take out Thalia. Right. Although leaving a Rafine behind is never really where you want to be. Now the next level would be, what if Jean Emmanuel just didn't even have Iganjo Castle? I, he's really good. Like, oh, yeah. it's in his range. That's something I would be too scared to do. Uh huh. But for sure, that's in JED's range. Right. Though I will say, if you're bluffing the player who goes, "Hey, can I read that <laughs> Plaza of Heroes?" You're probably not, right. not barking up the right tree. At any rate, okay, he had it. He did. The Chrome Host Seed Shark blocks, gets killed. Wow! And he Skrelv. even has a follow-up play with Skrelv. Okay. Okay, tame Not turn ideal. here for Foreman. Yeah. Just the briefcase and then go. And you can't be feeling good if if the prod discarded Disdainful Stroke, which oh, is one of the best wow. cards in this matchup. Especially at this juncture. Right. So like, that this, just this tells you that... This is where Matt's supposed to start casting four drops. Right. That's where you're just going, okay, well, how many counters do I have to fight through here? Mm -hmm. So Rafine's going to attack. This time it was a Seachrome Coast, though, that hit the bin. And Jean Emmanuel has multiple... Layers of protection now, presumably has some counter counter spell in hand, but also has the Skrelv here to protect the Rafine. Hey, Rafine can get the job done on its own. Absolutely. Really good start for Jean Emmanuel. Can he capitalize on it is the question. Matt probably just thinking it's like what what are the counter spells that I need to fight through? You need to do something here, right? Because if you don't, the Rafine's just gonna run away with it. So you just have to fight your way through the counter spells. Yep. And there's one to start. Ooh. So th this is telling me because now of course John Emmanuel can also attack with Skrelv, <laughs> but perhaps that's something that Matt Foreman wants. Oh, right? I see. It's like, I'm going to attack you. I'm hoping you attack me back because now you can't protect your Rafine, potentially. Well, looks like Jean Emmanuel took that invitation with vigor. <laughs> it also, of course, means that there's an additional attacker for the Rafine trigger, which right. is not good news for Matt. You get to sculpt the perfect hand here. Right. 
and still has the Plaza of Heroes, if needed, mm -hmm. to protect the Rafine. Yes, still looking good for Jean Emmanuel at this point. I see a pair of Atraxes in Matt Foreman's hand, but a couple, ma a couple lands away from casting that. You can certainly turn things around at some point. Bramble familiar. All right. Lithomantic Barrage here, uncounterable. Oh, counterable. Recounterable? Surge of Salvation. Are you serious? Giving everything hexproof and pre uh, prevent all damage from black and red sources. This card's actually also not the worst against mono red. And did he just Odawara? Oh, wow. He Odawara in combat to put <laughs> ossification back and get his Thalia back to block. <laughs> wow. That's nasty stuff what from a John turn. Emanuel. Odawara costing one, by the way. Like, that is hard to see. Yeah. And, I mean, if, if Jean Emanuel can find one or two counter spells or maybe here, I mean. two. But, yeah, at any rate, wow, 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 wow. Attack for six. Foreman's down to six. Hey. Lethal next turn, potentially. Jean Emanuel, if he can just maintain this board state for another turn or two, he could be in the top eight. Matt, Matt Foreman, Foreman with some stacked hand, but needs something big here and needs it to resolve. He's like, it's you a have it. Does it resolve? You have it. It does resolve. Okay. Now, but if John Emanuel can get Atroxa out of the way, right? You can just uh, hey, have a hundred cards. You're tapped exactly. out. I'll kill you. It's already a th a three powered Rafine here. No other blockers. Right, because he had to tap the Bramble Familiar for it. So the question is just, it, is it, the Atraxa going to be on the battlefield? Right. If you have an Odawara, if yep. you have a go for the throat. Yep. Any removal spell for Atraxa. Does he have it? I see a Fairy Mastermind. I do, too. I don't know what the last card is, though. It's, it's not close to enough just the Mastermind because of the lifelink. Okay. Okay, he doesn't have it yet. He, he also could something. attack with everything and try to find it. Right. If, For example, if you can find a way to kill one of the blocked creatures... Yes, your own right? block. You don't creature, gain the life, or of course the Atroxa itself. Right. If you find an Odawara here, you can yep. look for Odawara, and you can attack with four. That's a lot look, of looting. Look for go for the throat. Okay, we're searching. That's three triggers. He's gonna put him on Thalia. Does he find a way to get through? No, no I it don't was think two so. lands and a Rafine. Oh, he's going to give it protection, it. and that is enough. He just needed to find four spells. That's right. Oh, wow. Choose a color, and that color is going to get him through. Jean Emmanuel Dupra secures his winning in round, and he will be in your top eight tomorrow. Congratulations, Jean Emmanuel. Well earned. You know, he waited till the end of the season to get his top finish, but there he is. Yeah, found a way to kind of slide in, and of course, uh, we know just the caliber of player that John Emanuel is. Didn't have any top finishes this year, but uh, you know, anytime he makes a top eight, he's gonna be one of the favorites. Yeah, he said he wanted to be a player who's won the World Magic Cup and also the World Championship. So, you know, he's, he's like aiming for little combos now right. with his wins. Well, he had his opportunity, of course, top eight of the World Championship a couple years ago, and uh, now another opportunity to potentially get that crown. Okay, we have a very similar situation here in our next round uh, where we have a win and in for one player and a win and hope for the other player. The win and in is for Greg Orange on the left side of your screen there. The win and hope, Kane Reinhard. We're gonna come in on game number three and we're gonna see if Greg can, can secure the seat or if Kane can put themselves in the running for the top eight. You see the record difference there, eight, four, and one. Just right. that one draw somewhere along the last couple of days, and it could either be just enough or, or not quite enough, depending on who wins. Game three. Right here. Yeah, this is game three. So players have split the first two. Oh, and we are okay. well down the stretch here on game three. Take a look at the life totals. Greg Orange down to five. Are there any threats, though? There's a creature land there. Okay. There are three beanstalks. So if Greg can find anything big to play. It certainly seems like Greg is ready to go. <laughs> like, oh, his hand is completely loaded here. Greg seems to be in a pretty commanding position. OK, he's going right. to go for Wandering Emperor and then plus one, plus one counter first strike. That would trade with the 2-1 first strike land. Right. 
Fair enough. That's first strike, right? Yeah, this is first strike. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, they both do now. Right, but now there's a wandering. And Greg, or I th is there a ley line binding of that hand too? It feels like one five drop and we're done. Right. Because there's no relevant permanence left here for Kane. Unless Kane has some kind of uh, some kind of reach burn effect in their deck. Kane's on Grixis mid range. Okay, there's Kaito. Uh, okay. Yeah. Lay line binding, lay down arms, a couple of syncopate, uh, eight, at least no, a couple of syncopates. This is for Greg. Yeah. There's the binding. <laughs> draw three. Okay, draw one three mana, off of your one mana remove. <laughs> one anything. mana kill a thing, draw three. I think we're going to see Greg orange. Yeah. I mean, he does need to find a way to actually get Kane's life total from 18 to zero, but. That can't Look, be hard, right? Gre Greg's a control mage. He'll find a way. Once he firmly has control of the game, you have that Wandering Emperor. That's probably all he needs. He's got nine cards in hand right now. I would say Greg is living his best life at the moment. Oh, absolutely. And it's just, it's so awesome to see. Greg just kind of always plays his own way. Mm -hmm. Just like, hey, well, you know, this is the metagame, but I like Islands and Plains. So I'm going to put that in my deck and just try to figure it out. And we see Syncopate is going to hit Shieldred. Greg with the don't even try it. <laughs> He's just going through the motion. You hear him? <laughs> yeah. I'm, tab, oh, I'm just playing for top eight. Make but, yeah, I'm just going to play some stuff. He's so chill. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now Chromeho Sea Shark is a way to close out the game very, very quickly. He can just make a couple of huge tokens if he has anything to do. This is time now. This is turn zero and you have five turns. Time has been called. Time has been called? Remember, the previous round also went to time for Greg Orange. Man, we might have a long day tomorrow, Paul. <laughs> oh, man. There's there have been, been, a, lot been a lot of draws, draws. in this event. Yeah, well, well, these ramp decks make the games go real long. They do. We saw Willie in that game, too, able to withstand an absolutely absurd board from Kenji. So here, Greg really would like to play a couple of spells so he can get that Chrome host. Is this Hordlock monster? Draw three? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Like, do I have anything else I can do? I mean, I don't know what happens if they draw here. I think Greg should be able to do this, right? Kane's got one card in there. I hand. think so, but like, uh, how about we do something? There's an Odawara too. Okay, that'll help it's, out a this lot. This is yeah. Close on the samurai, I guess. Close on the <laughs> yes. samurai, I guess. an attack for 11. That has, has vigilance. There we go. Greg's not Chomp. used to attacking with creatures. <laughs> okay, that's a good chunk. That is. And remember that that shark in play too is gonna has the potential to generate some giant tokens. Huge. Leyline binding makes a six six. Right. Greg down to five life. This There's was Rexian might. So, but if the, if this was turn one, and now it's two. Yeah, Greg, Greg has two turns, turns to close this out yeah, with got so many five. cards. Yeah, he should yeah. be able to. Greg Orange, he's just always hanging around the top tables. He's always in contention. Was and it Monty earlier today that said keep an eye on Greg? Uh, he said he thought that his I deck know was well suited for that the was meta. Cedric. That was Cedric. Cedric was was pretty high. You know, with the way the meta game shook out, there was a lot of mid range, and Greg loves to play decks that beat mid range decks, right? And this is exactly one of them. It's I'm going to take this Azoria shell. I'm going to add four copies of up the Beanstalk, and it's going to be impossible for any of these mid range decks to go over to the top of me. Good call, Cedric. Things are looking very good for Greg Orange. Ooh. Chandra. Okay. Counter. <laughs> For as much. For five? 
I mean, he wants a big token. Could do it for, yeah, even more to make a lethal yeah, creature. Over syncopate would be fine. So an 8 Incubate token, three cards off the Beanstalk. I wonder why Greg splashed for that card. <laughs> oh. And he just scooped it up. That is Greg Orange with the victory. So he wins his winning in. So we had two matches here, one of them with a winning in and one of them with a win in hope, and both of the winning ins made it. Yeah. So nice and clean. Nice and safe. We have more. We have more, by the way, Paul. We're, we're actually not done yet. No, no, there's more. There's more. Okay. All right. I'm I'm in for more. Yeah. And, I'm in for uh, more. It is one of those winning in, winning in ones. This was a this this one's a like a real winning in. Right. Not okay. not the one where it's like, well, which which player are you? The one that can actually make it, or the one that has to really really hope? Ken Takahama, Lorenzo Tiralizzi, are. Uh, the last one for us here. And uh, they're both on winning in status. And we're gonna join them in game number three. Take a look at them right here. Nine and four. This is the record, you know, that everybody has that with right. their clean winning in. And it is an Esper mid-range mirror match. <laughs> well, one of them's not gonna be playing tomorrow. We're gonna figure out who it is. We're, oh boy. Paul, this is game three, but it's not just game three. This is extra turns. And look at these life totals. This is the fourth turn. Th th this game is just not going to have a conclusion, Wait a right? What's going to happen then? Do they both draw and then? There's no way they can both make it, right? Right, but or I mean. either could make it? It's not clear who's ahead here. This is really tough. You know, the players are faced with an interesting challenge here. There's about 105 players in the field. And the tiebreakers is a little different than they're used to. You know, that's a size of tournament that we haven't had much of. Typically, there's 400 or even more at a Pro Tour, and we have a good feel for how the tiebreakers work. At a local tournament, it might be 30 or 50. This is 100. Yeah. We've seen a lot of these. Yeah. This format must be on the on the slower side here, right? We just this, this has come up multiple times over the course of this weekend. Of course, it's also the feature match. You play a little slower, right? You don't want to mess anything up here. But it turn just, four. It really one of the things that sometimes the players will do is try to figure out who, like, if it's detrimental to both, who is going to win. Yeah. And that, sometimes one of them will say, "You got it." That is because often I'd what rather have one of us go than neither of yeah. us. Yeah. But when you look at this, is somebody clearly ahead? No. It doesn't seem that Not way. Not to me. Ken is lower on life total. Um, Oh, they're going to okay. show each other their hands. So, so Lorenzo does have more action. In my plan here was to start pressuring. Yep. Keeping your tie up for fairway, which is the This is thing. tough. So this is so difficult. This is, this is, obviously, Lorenzo's hand is better right. at the moment. And he's at 24. And he's at 24, but boy, you're speculating a heck Right, it's still line. not over. This is really up to the players at this point. This is... Such a tough decision here, but remember, a draw likely knocks both of them out. I, I here. think it would just knock I'm them just both out. We're obviously not going to look at anything here. Ken is just having more, a little think. I think you have more stuff. Is he going to concede? This is going to be one of the hardest concessions cards. you can make. Is he actually going to concede? Top eight of your first world championship. Lorenzo made his case. He believes that he has the much, I think, much higher likelihood chance of winning. I don't know if that's true. You have the cut down to kill the fairy mastermind, right? It's a 3-2. Yep. And you have your own fairy mastermind. You make a 1-1. One, one. He, he he's actually down. running through what would happen. But then he has the Gix's command, which would resolve. Yes. With the Urtai. So I mean, Lorenzo does Lorenzo seem Lorenzo has more firepower ahead. in hand right now. Right. It's just... This isn't enough to just win. <coughs> Ken's walking through it. Yeah. You got and he's wow. going to concede to Lorenzo Terlizzi. Wow, good guy, Ten Kakahama. Takes the loss there, and that is Lorenzo making it through. And look at this, even a big hug between these two players. I've never seen anything like that. What a guy. That is insane. Like, this is, this is for top eight of worlds. I mean, yeah, if they get a draw, it's not good for either of them, but Ken just conceded. I mean, at the highest stakes. Possible. Right? The, the highest, highest level stakes. you can do that at. First world championship. First opportunity at a top eight. 
not completely clear that you were going to lose that game. But look, the draw knocks both of you out. And Ken, big, big concession. Big props to him. Yeah, for, seriously, uh, that was that. Uh, a real gesture uh, there from Ken. Wow. OK, well, it looks like we're going to be taking a short break here. Oh, sorry. Actually, we're going to go right to the booth with Maria. And uh, yeah, we're a little shell-shocked up here. <laughs> but uh, let's send it over to Maria and see what they think at the news desk. Hey, you can, you can take a short break with us here at the news desk, everybody, as we await the top eight announcement. Maria Bertholdi and Moni Davuti. What a day of magic, Moni. <laughs> what a day.